Hey everyone, I've got a very special person for you guys here, uh, Warcraft 3 development team. I'm going to let him introduce himself. Matt, thanks for taking the time to uh, discuss with me some of these uh, changes that are coming up for Warcraft 3. Uh, would you care to introduce yourself and what you do in Blizzard? Sure. Uh, I'm also uh, very honored to be here to talk to you guys. Uh, it's a really cool event to, to get some of these faces back together and playing. Uh, my name is Matt Morris. I'm lead designer on Classic Games, and we just uh, released 129 PTR with one of the largest balance updates we've ever done. Uh, I don't know if it's the largest one, but it's, it's definitely very large, and so we've got some really exciting stuff to talk about today. All right. And, uh, I know you've been with Blizzard for, uh, for a very long time. And would you care to tell us how that journey started? Uh, yeah, you know, I've been here uh, roughly 21 years now. I got hired uh, in QA back for Diablo 1 testing. Uh, I was hired as a temp employee and, you know, they didn't really have a large department at the time. Uh, but they really liked me, which is very fortunate. And they said, hey, why don't you stick on? And I just really became a sponge to the industry, right? I, I played all our games. I played other people's games. I, I really um, just learned the technology as it was being developed at the time. Everything was DOS-based at the time, then it converted to Windows. I uh, became very familiar with the editing tools from, you know, Star or Warcraft 2 uh, to Starcraft 1, and then, you know, at that point I transitioned into doing Warcraft 3 developments and just learning those tools and transitioned, you know, helping on the WoW team, the Starcraft 2 team, and now I'm over here on Classic Games. So awesome. it's, it's been an exciting journey. So you were part of the original Warcraft 3 development as well? Yes, yes. There was, uh, I don't remember the exact number, it was, it was a small handful of us, uh, designers, uh, mostly around building the campaign levels and then just a few system designers. And yeah, it was the Reign of Chaos or Frozen Throne. So uh, it's like awesome. putting on some old shoes at this point, coming back in and getting really excited for the new race. So. Yeah. What new new race, of course, in Not terms race. of race. <laughs> correct, correct, absolutely. Uh, uh, what's it like for you? Like coming back to Warcraft 3 now after this time, classic development teams looking at it again and to revisit something that you poured a lot of energy mm -hmm. and love into way back when. You know, it was it was really exciting to have that opportunity when I came back and, the, you know, I sat down from the computer and I opened up the editor and I was looking at some of the, you know, current uh, ladder maps and started fiddling around with it. Uh, it was really strange. It was almost therapeutic for me, right? Because it brought back all these old memories. I hadn't touched the editor in so long. Um, and I was really able to just kind of let go and just, you know, immerse myself back in the editor tool and, and just really play. And, you know, and, and like you said, some of the maps I've worked on, uh, looking back, I'm like, hmm, I wonder why I did that. You know, <laughs> I was, was kind of new in development at the time, you know, but now that I've you know, been doing it for so long, it, it was interesting to kind of look back at my own work and, you know, even critique myself and say, hmm, Matt, you should have probably done this instead of that. And so uh, it's actually kind of cool to actually have that opportunity to come back and make those changes where not a lot of developers get that opportunity. Yeah, I, I wish I could go back to some of the tournaments I played 12 years ago and make some changes and magically win the tournament yeah, with what awesome. I learned over the time. Definitely uh, get how that can be cool to uh, look back at that mm -hmm. and see uh, how you did it and how you might have changed it. Uh, so you, uh, you're part of a team now that is uh, doing a classic game redevelopment. Mm -hmm. uh, I understand you worked on Remastered as well, Sam? Yeah, you know, I came back onto the team. It's, it's been not too long. By the time I came over to the team, StarCraft Remaster was, was pretty close to being done. Um, as everyone knows, we didn't really do a lot to the gameplay. We really wanted to keep it pure uh, to its form. And so it was really just, you know, bringing my experience of, you know, closing on a product to really help these guys, you know, um, work out through some issues and just kind of, you know, just be a little bit of reinsurance. So I, I can't say I did much on that particular game, um, but I was at that time starting to take a lot of notes for the Warcraft 3 stuff. I, I knew that this patch was going to come down the road and, and, you know, really talking to the pro scenes and the community and really just getting their feedback as, hey, if there's going to be some changes, what would you like to do? That's super exciting stuff for us, you know, as a, as a long time Warcraft 3 player, I and many of the people watching right now, I think, like, we're thrilled to have Blizzard and, and, and you and your team looking at Warcraft 3 again. So, uh, could you take us a little bit through how that started, how that began, and also uh, how long ago it's been that you started looking at Warcraft? gathering feedback and kind of seeing like, all right, we, we, what can we do with this? Yeah, well, I mean, you know, the Classic Games team itself, they've, uh, you know, Warcraft 3 has uh, been a game that they've been looking at for a, while. for a long time. It was really making sure that the servers are working, that uh, there's, you know, little interruption. Um, this is even with StarCraft. And, you know, the more we looked at it and the more as, you know, the, the games and the, and the platforms started getting, you know, a little bit more advanced, it just 
kind of occurred to us that, you know, there's such a thriving community out there. There's people who are so passionate about this game. And it was kind of injustice from our standpoint to just step away and really not do a whole lot. And so, you know, once StarCraft Remastered has gone out the door, we started asking our questions, well, is there things that we could do uh, with Warcraft 3 to address some of the issues and the concerns from the community? And so really this was, you know, our big moment, big step to really say, hey, we've been listening, we've been listening. And the fans are like, hey, when are you can actually do something? So this is our opportunity to finally do something and really collect that feedback. Because, as you know, this is just the PTR. We haven't gone live with this yet. And so, you know, this weekend, uh, all the feedback we've been getting so far from the forums, you know, a lot of you guys have been posting things on YouTube and anything else, giving us feedback. So we're going to collect that. You know, we'll, we'll go back to... Uh, the desks this week and really figure out what more we need to do to really get this out the door. Very exciting stuff. You know, it's uh, it's, it's been a long time since Warcraft 3 got uh, a big attention, like yeah. big updates, and it's just really exciting to see that's coming again. And from what I understand, 1.29 is only the beginning. Yeah, you know, this is this isn't us just coming back and walking away and saying, hey, we're going to disappear for a while. Uh, this is really our first step, right? Um, the community knows the game more than us, and it's, it's kind of uh, saddening to say that, but you know, we've always been focused on the next game and building these games. Uh, you know, It's a very important game to Blizzard. You know, There's a lot of fans, even inside of Blizzard, who still really love Warcraft 3, so they're really excited to, to hear this stuff. And, you know, and the real message is, you know, this is just the first step, right? We want to do additional balance changes. If it requires more hero balances, if we get into the point where we feel that the units or the items or the shops or tech tree, like, you know, we're asking the question, like, nothing at this point should be untouched. What needs to be done in order to make this game really good and something that people have been waiting for? Yeah. I don't need to worry about that. It is already really good. Mm -hmm. But to imagine that it can even be better, that's, that's, awesome. that's the crazy part. All right, so let's let's talk a little bit about the, the some of the changes that 1.29 okay. uh, brought out. So first of all, really big important change this day and age, mm -hmm. I think, is the is the widescreen. Yes. Uh, most of all, we were used to playing with 4 by 3 Heck, we were playing on CRT monitors back then, right? Yeah. That's how much uh, the times changed 15 years ago. <laughs> but uh, so widescreen has come. Yes. It's really cool. And, uh, and uh, you've made the decision to, for now, as we can see on the PTR, to have two UI bars, bottom right mm -hmm. and left, uh, with kind of brick motif. So the minimap is still in the same place that my muscle memory is, mm -hmm. uh, is used to. Uh, and so some people may say the minimap could be bottom left, and others may say I'm happy with where it is. Yeah. Is there any thought that this is the right way or corner is the right way? Was it just easiest to build it like this for now? Do you plan to make it customizable where that goes? Yeah, I mean the real the real short answer is is in order to get this change out. This is something some of the engineers have been working on for a while, but really to pull it together and get to this point was you know the fastest way for us to do it is only the end game. Uh, you'll see that the game menus and everything else is still letterboxed. All right. But we really thought it was important to get people into the game and experience it. Um, you know, when we do this PTR, it's really hard for people to come back who are really passionate about the game. There's other platforms that people have been using, and we looked at them and we're like. You know, Battle.net really needs these things as well, right? Like if we want our fans to really come back and give us the feedback that we're looking for and hoping for, uh, we need to make sure uh, that our platform is supporting what most people expect in the modern game. And widescreen was something for us that we said, we got to do this. Uh, and right now, like you said, it's, you know, it's not in the way you think. It's almost like the, the original way it was. Uh, ultimately, this is short term, long term. We would look at it as, as possibly having an option to say, is it going to be bottom left or leave it where it's at? Okay. Uh, any flexibility for the players, I, I think, is is typically good because the work is done. Now we make it take it to the next step and we just you know add a tall in there and say, hey, what do you guys prefer? Yeah, yeah, that, that's awesome. I, I personally think I prefer the minimap where it is, so I don't need to look as far. Mm -hmm. But I can also see how maybe the option to have it bottom yeah. left would make more sense to some. So it's cool to see that maybe in the future that can be a thing. And then the zoom level. Mm -hmm. uh, it seems like you've zoomed out the camera a little bit more, mm -hmm. maybe to make it feel more intuitive uh, for for the kind of widescreen uh, we can use more. Uh, was that a conscious decision? Let's see how this works out. Is this your vision for it? And again, customizability, yes, no? Um, you know, I wouldn't say this is ultimately the, the vision for it. There was a couple of things that, that got us to that point. Um, and we experiment internally with a lot of different things. and, and then. 
you know, we make some decisions as to what to keep before we push it to live. Uh, and this was, was a given opportunity with the new widescreen support to kind of give a new camera perspective. Um, I do know that, you know, after talking to you guys just today, you know, going back to sitting down with the team, we chatted about that real quick, we did some checks, and uh, currently what you see in the PTR is actually not intended. So the changes that we thought reverted were not officially done, and our eyes were like, oh, this is just part of the perspective of the CT9. So we just actually went back and verified it. Uh, we're hoping to uh, get a quick change, and actually we'd love to pass it by you guys to say, hey, is this still better, or do you guys like the new one? Because I know, you know, from the people we talked to last night and the people today, they're saying maybe this is something to get used to, um, which is interesting. So uh, you guys will have a unique opportunity to kind of weigh in, saying, hey, we like this, we like that. So. Um, you guys can really help direct uh, the next direction for this. Nice, sorry. I'm happy to hear that. <laughs> but, you know, last night I was thinking, maybe it's zoomed out a little bit too much. Mm -hmm. uh, it feels more macro, less micro. Today I was playing, I was like, actually not that bad. Yeah. So I, I'm, I'm still now you're torn. about it too, yeah. yeah. Uh, we need to try that, we need to cool. test it. So. Very cool. Okay, cool to hear. So uh, you recently added the, the mana bars for, unit, for mm -hmm. units and heroes. And there's a few ways you could have gone with that, like don't do it, mm -hmm. or only for yourself or for everyone. Uh, how do you get an idea like that? Because usually, well, as a professional gamer, I was conditioned to accept the game as it is, mm -hmm. because that's the best for your mindset as a competitor. Sure. So I, I wouldn't even be able to come up with an idea like there should be mana bars. Like yeah. How it is, is how I'll work around it. And I've learned to click enemy units and heroes to find out how much mana they have. Mm -hmm. But it's very future friendly and more casual friendly sure. to have the mana bar. So how did that come? Uh... Uh, you know, I would say over the years, uh, you know, the fans have been so good at giving us information. Um, and I know at times we're not responding as fast as we can, uh, but we are collecting all this information and we, we check it. And so when we get these opportunities to make a push and do a PTR like this, you know, we go through that backlog list of things to do. Um, and that was a, something that kept on servicing from various groups, uh, different communities that kept on asking about that. And so we talked with the engineers and I said, well, that's, that's, that's a relatively quick thing we could do. Let's check it out. So uh, it was implemented in a universal sense. So the you see yours and you see the enemies as well. Um, but now, you know, based on conversation with you and the, and the rest of the guys who are here for the Warcraft 3 Invitational, um, you know, the discussion is, should it be on the enemy, should it not, it, does it require the player, the skill level to check, um, time will tell, like this is PTR, this is time really the opportunity for everyone to weigh in on these kind of things, so. Alright, good, good testing guys. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, there, there are a number of uh, other, there are a number of other things that uh, uh, people might think like, oh, this could be nice for, for Warcraft 3, mm -hmm. for, for instance, uh, you get into a game in a ladder game, and it'll say your opponent's stats, mm -hmm. uh, which currently it doesn't do yet. Uh, and then there's things like, uh, for example, being able to check the enemy's enemy player's race. Uh, if you were AFK during the loading screen and you didn't see their race, there's no way to know anymore in the game. Sure. Even though in a game like StarCraft 2, for instance, you can open the player profile and check. But these kind of things, probably they make sense to mm -hmm. be able to show. And of course, it will cost development time, right? But if people have ideas like this, what I understand is you're open to hear them. Yes. Uh, you're, you're hungry for that. Feedback, yeah, right? that, that particular feedback was just heard for the first time today. Uh, I think it's really interesting. Uh, there's nothing, you know, instinctually I'm not thinking like, oh, we shouldn't do that, but it's more like, hmm, why shouldn't we be doing that, right? The conversation now becomes, why shouldn't we do something versus, oh, why should we? Um, which is refreshing in the sense that that's what classic games are as a whole have been trying to do with the community is, is really listen to what they want um, because ultimately it's the community that's really held these games together and they're the ones that are so passionate about it so what can we do to make it more friendly for them um, versus us trying to develop a new game and telling you how you should like it right so it, it's, a, it's a unique opportunity to be uh, on classic games and really talk to the community and ask for these kind of questions like the mana bar or you know learning about the stats of your player as you go in so you don't have to check a third party website or something like that yeah. so. Awesome. So I have a few questions that are a bit more out there. Sure. Uh, for example, you're, you've worked on campaigns and mm -hmm. maps extensively. So the question is, would there be any chance to have future campaign missions or single player missions for Warcraft 3? Uh, 
Uh, I'm always open to it because, as you know, I like, I like to make maps. I like content. I, I think Warcraft 3 is, is a very rich uh, universe. Obviously, World of Warcraft has told some many, many stories, uh, and it would be interesting to see those stories in, in a RTS uh, setting. Uh, but, you know, ultimately right now, 129 is still not out the door, and we're really focused on that. Um, but if there's ever an opportunity to do something like that, I would... I would definitely start uh, petitioning to do so. So uh, there, there's no guarantees on what we're going to be doing, um, but I am a big fan of telling narrative experiences through RTSs, and I think you know all the years of experience we've learned with you know StarCraft II and whatnot, uh, going back to the Warcraft Three campaign would uh, make things really interesting. Very cool. Uh, the recent 1.29 uh, patch. Uh, when looking at balance, touched only upon heroes currently. Mm -hmm. Tyrant heroes, alter heroes. And you can see that there was an effort to bring up lesser used abilities to make them more viable. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes irrespective of the of the hero's strength. It's not so much about their strength in the meta, whether they get used to it or not, but more looking at the diversity yes. uh, to, to increase variety of play. It was only uh, notably only on heroes, no units yet. Mm -hmm. And so one might assume and uh, you'll tell me yeah. that uh, it's just one phase of looking at balance yet. Yeah. yeah, this is one phase. Uh, when we talked about doing this balance update, there was you know, so many different things we can do. Uh, as I said, there's just, I got pages and pages of feedback about items, uh, units, tech tree, uh, just controls in general. Um, and we felt that if we went and made it a wide change to so many different things and we'd go out the door with it, and if there was something wrong, uh, it became more difficult for us to really pinpoint where the issue was. So mm -hmm. we thought it'd be a little bit safer for us to go and say, hey, let's make some changes to the heroes. Um, and I know in some cases that certain heroes, um, by some of the nerfs, the concern is that maybe the race itself is not weaker. Mm -hmm. um, so we're going to look at that as well. So as we go forward, we want to adjust what we've already done with the heroes and then start making changes to the units and the tech tree, the item, the loot drops, the creeps. Um, at this point, we're just going to do one step at a time, but eventually going through the whole game and, and making changes where it's necessary. We're not really trying to make changes for the sake of changes. We want to make changes because, you know, we feel this is important to the game, you know, talking to the pro community, uh, talking to the map makers and stuff like what are the things they want to see change. Um, but we're not necessarily just going finding things not working and trying to bring them up. Um, unless, you know, at some point we get to the, you know, many years down the road and we're doing these balance changes and then Maybe we start hitting that stuff, but right now it's really just kind of focusing on, uh, you know, what are people playing the most? What are their options? You know, they never picked this ability, so well, maybe if we raise up that particular ability, now there's some play there. So that sounds really good. Uh, everything you said, including maybe a few years down the road, <laughs> I think people will be very excited to yeah. hear, you know, that kind of, uh, you know, at least the plans for that kind of. Yeah, uh, I mean, ultimately that should be the message here is yeah. that you know we're not just making this change in one way. We, we don't know what the the, the cadence of releases are, um, but we're really dedicated at this point to uh, making sure that Warcraft Three <laughs> remains viable as we move forward and forward. So. Widescreen support will help a lot with that, mm -hmm. and I personally love playing on Battle.net. As grateful as I am for the third-party programs that have been around mm -hmm. where you could find meaningful multiplayer experiences, Battle.net is like where I grew up, where yeah. I spent much of my childhood, so I'm happy to play there again. And widescreen is a big part of that, and it sounds like you're taking it in exactly the right direction, checking what is the right zoom level, mm -hmm. UI, and so on. Another part will be, um, you know, Map packers, for instance, mm -hmm. and they are more or less sometimes prevalent in, on the Warcraft 3 servers, but you have some excellent anti-cheating tools in various other games that you have. Mm -hmm. Is there any way to use that, and, and what are the, or what are the plans to combat map hacking, people that ruin other people's playing experience? We, we are actively looking at that stuff um, as far as plans as to when it rolls out. Um, I don't know. I, as a designer, I'm more focused on the balance and the maps and stuff, but uh, we're aware. We're aware of the situation. We don't agree uh, that map packers should just sit out there and just kind of ruin other people's experience. You know, this is really about the community, and if the community is, is having issues with this, you know, obviously we're going to listen and we're going to try, try to take steps to address it. Um, I just, at this point, don't know as to when that's going to happen, but it is on our radar. It is something we discuss. So. Very nice. Well, make uh, Bata a good place to coming in for yes. the Warcraft 3 players. That would be the goal. 1.29, first pass, many more things to come. 
uh, and, and still people may wonder, when, when can we see this coming out? Is it going to come out at the end of this invitational, in a year, half a year? What kind of timeline are we looking at? Uh, I, I hate to give you the traditional soon. Uh, <laughs> is, is it Blizzard soon? Um, but ultimately, it's really based on this feedback we're getting right now. Um, okay. We've actually generated a, a long list of issues that we didn't even see. Some bugs have cropped up with the PTR itself. Um, so we'll have to go through and make sure that uh, clean those up, uh, take additional feedback on the maps, additional feedback on zoom levels, mana bars, hero balance. And, you know, these, our team is dedicated to get this out the door. We don't want to rush it, so we want to make sure we get in a good spot. Um, but we want to have it on a shorter timeline. It's not something we're looking months down the road and hopefully it's relatively soon sooner than that. So Okay, sounds right there. Sounds nice. Uh, then uh, Warcraft 3, is there any chance that it could end up on the Batonet launcher or something of the like? Uh, like for instance, Starcraft Remastered has done. Mm -hmm. uh, are there any challenges with that? Uh, I think there's the obvious challenges. Of it's just an older game, older code base. Um, there's a lot of technical things I, I cannot speak to. Um, you know, these conversations come up. There's, you know, I, I hate to kind of go back to it for you, but you know, it's the 129 that's is kind of in front of us right now. We do have long-term goals of what we think is going to happen. Um, we're not necessarily in the position to share those yet, but we are focused on the 129, the short-term goals, and you know, really paving us to make the next step and the next step and the next step. So. Uh, so ultimately that these steps become faster and faster. That'd be the really uh, sweet spot for us. So um, we can make changes relatively quickly um, and efficiently. Okay. Speaking of maps, I, I think that's going to be one of the final things. Uh, Tarina Stan, for instance, is mm -hmm. one of the maps that uh, has come out with an edited version. Mm -hmm. And uh, can you tell me some of the uh, ideas behind that and what you tried to target when you looked at Tarina Stan? Yeah, you know, I would say for, for most of the maps, um, I think one of the first work assignments I gave myself was to really look at some of the old classic, you know, Reign of Chaos maps and the Frozen Throne maps. And I went through and I just, I kind of looked through at them and saying, you know, what if I were to go into this map, what would I do, right? And I just started taking those notes and, and then I started doing that and I started trying to just pick the maps that I know people enjoyed and friendly, uh, ones that people always remember, the nostalgic kind of feel. And so I kind of focused on those and made those changes. Uh, Tiranistan in itself, one of the things I did as I opened these maps, I would look at the, the object editor and I would see the diversity in the, in the items that were dropped. And what I thought would be a good idea is to kind of see a nice range, like from level one to level two, level three, and kind of work your way up. So almost like its own progression for the players as they're leveling up their heroes, they're taking on bigger items or camps and getting better items. And I thought that was pretty nice. And one of the things that stood out for me with Tiranistan was when I opened it up, it kind of flatlined across where you, we quickly got up to like level two, level three, and then it's just a mm -hmm. lot of them. Yeah, right? yeah. So uh, I was like, hmm, maybe we should change it up to see how it is. Uh, I've gotten a lot of feedback on it. Uh, some people enjoy it, some people don't. Uh, we'll have to try to figure out the, the right quote unquote balance for it. Change is uh, always scary. <laughs> yeah, it, it is. A couple of, couple of things I know people have pointed out, and I agree with it, that there's in the middle of that map, there's two camps that have some really good drops, and the concern was, you know, these camps uh, proximity to each other are fairly close, and the concern was, if you're snowballing the map, you hit one camp, you're hitting the next one, All you're right. getting two really good items. Oh, sure, because if you control that space, you get them both. Yes. Whereas on many other maps, sometimes it can be like, if you get that one, I, I have enough, one. even yes. with a smaller army, I can get there because you're that far away. Yeah, so there's that concern, and I think yeah. that's, that's a real concern, right? Yeah. So I'll have to take a look at that. Um, you know, when I looked at the map, I also thought maybe this was uh, a little bit on the, the, the faster kind of, um, I wouldn't say rush map, but the proximity because the start location weren't quite the corners, they were kind of slightly offset on the sides. And so I kind of flipped them with the expansion thing, oh, this would be very different. Um, and, you know, finding out later as we played it that it actually wasn't a rush map in the first place, and now it's actually a little bit further, and that might not have been a good thing. So this is really good for us to, to kind of get that feedback because there are certain aspects we can revert. We can switch back to you know the original start locations oh, and right. make those changes. So um, what do you guys want? Yeah, right? That's a tough question. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, cool. Uh, very cool. Uh, so actually, on that note, what is your favorite map? You mentioned that you were looking back at some of these maps 
where some of the most yeah. epic games happen. What's your favorite? I, I have two favorite maps, and when I come back, it was really exciting to see that the community still loves the same two maps that I really like. One was uh, Turtle Rock, and then Nolwood. Those are those are two, and those are the you know special to me because those are the ones I had made. So, uh, yeah. so it's kind of excited to see that people still really enjoy those maps. Yeah, for two v two and one v one, yes, Turtle and Nolwood. Yeah. Even though it's like multi-spawn location, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. No one, I think, uh, I'll have to double check my nose, but I think it's not in the current 1v1 uh, bucket, just uh, there's a lot of The back. Nolwood, right? Nolwood, yeah. Right, yeah, yeah. So, but it's still there for 2v2, it's, it's not gone. Yeah. You know, one time on Nolwood, I was bottom right location, and someone was right underneath, mm. so we were very close to each other, and I did a peon scout, this was in the tournament finals. I did a peon scout past his base, Ooh. missed his base, scouted there, sent a second peon scout across the other side, and by process of elimination, I realized he must be cross-map. Mm. So I sent my hero and my, all my units cross-map, all based on a failed scout. Oh. <laughs> Before I knew it, I am on the other side of the map and someone was in my base. Oh no. Uh, it was terrible. Uh. <laughs> well, that won't happen to you now. <laughs> well, you just have to scout properly. It was yeah. my fault. But uh, there's, there's a lot of different spawn permutations. Uh, I've, I've always liked the map as well. So it's quite good for uh, for me as an art player. Ah, cool. Favorite unit? Favorite unit. Um, I don't know if I have a favorite unit, to be honest. Um, I tend to gravitate towards the underdog, right? Like the units that you don't see a lot of, uh, you know, Mountain Giant, Torn, those are the kind of <laughs> things I like. I'm like, where's the Necromancer? Yeah. And, you know, and I know why those don't get put in play, so we'll, we'll take a look at that stuff. But um, those tend to be the, the units I like. Yeah, I think a lot of people feel the same. There's people that request me when I stream Warcraft 3, like, mm -hmm. can you play with Torrents? Can you play with Necromancers? Can yeah. you show us some Shamans? I remember Bloodlust was like all the rage. Yeah, yeah. that'd be cool. Uh, very cool. Well, I think we're very lucky to have you and uh, the team work on, on the game that we all know and love so much. That was such a big part of our childhood and now our adult life as well. Awesome. Lots of memories and looking to create new ones with the game as well. So. I think from my entire viewer base and from myself, a very genuine thank you for uh, picking up the game again and uh, working on it. And we're very excited to see, I think, what's going to be coming up. Oh, cool. Thank you. Thank you as much as far as uh, being there, uh, supporting our game. Your guys' community is awesome. Um, we love the community. We love you guys. So uh, anything we can do to give back is, is really just a big win for us. Thank you very much. Cool. Matt Morris.